Jonathan Glazer is a British director whose latest movie has won Best International Feature Film at the Academy Awards. The Zone of Interest is a study of how incredibly ordinary people can live normal lives while carrying out horrific brutality, like the Holocaust. And in his acceptance speech, Glazer made this connection between his film and recent events in Gaza. All our choices were made to reflect and confront us in the present, not to say, look what they did then, rather look what we do now. Our film shows where dehumanization leads at its worst. It shaped all of our past and present. Right now, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness and the Holocaust being hijacked by an occupation which has led to conflict for so many innocent people. Whether the victims of October the... Whether the victims of October the 7th in Israel or the ongoing attack on Gaza, all the victims of this dehumanization. How do we resist? <laughs> Alexandra Bistron Kaladziejczyk, the girl who glows in the film as she did in life, chose to. I dedicate this to her memory and her resistance. That's a really powerful intervention. It was immediately misrepresented. So Batya Ungar Sargon is opinion editor at Newsweek. She said this, I simply cannot fathom the moral rot in someone's soul that leads them to win an award for a movie about the Holocaust and with the platform given to them to accept that award by saying, we stand here as men who refute their Jewishness. Now, that is an absolute misrepresentation of what he said, which would be very obvious to you from seeing the speech, right? Um, he didn't refute his Jewishness, he refuted his Jewishness being used to justify a genocidal war against another people. It's completely, completely ridiculous, that kind of misrepresentation. Very, very powerful speech. Also, it was sort of noted that he didn't sort of tag that onto an end of a speech so it could be cut by news organizations, sort of right at the beginning. Um, and yeah, super powerful. I haven't yet seen the film, but everyone who's told me about it says it's absolutely Amazing. I mean, it wasn't just Jonathan Glazer bringing up Gaza at the Oscars this weekend. Pro-Palestinian protesters made their presence felt too, blocking traffic to the Dolby Theatre where the awards are held and shouting shame at those heading for the ceremony. Police were out in extra numbers, threatening arrests for what they called unlawful assembly. The protests caused some Oscar arrivals to be delayed by as much as an hour, and one of those held up was actor Mark Ruffalo. Shut down the Oscars tonight. Humanity wins. Really cool kind of way to go into the Oscars. Like it, it was it was impressive, not just that speech that you saw from, from the director, but also, I mean, the reaction was very positive. Right? So it does seem like potentially something is shifting. I mean, very much belatedly. Um, you know, the American establishment, we, we're seeing what the government is doing. Um, and it's, you know, it's not like there's this huge national revolt against Joe Biden sort of not just tacitly supporting a genocidal war, I mean, actively sort of enabling um, a genocidal war. But it is interesting that you are seeing uh, more people sort of in Hollywood being willing to stand up against this. And of course, while the Academy Awards were taking place in Hollywood, a very different occasion and was being marked on the other side of the world in Jerusalem. Hundreds of Muslim Palestinians tried to attend the Al-Aqsa Mosque for prayers on the eve of the holy month of Ramadan. As a crowd of worshippers waited to enter the mosque, they're stormed um, by Israeli police. And you can see here that leads to a crush of people trying to escape. Officers, as you can see, um, then hit people with their batons and throw them to the ground. The Al-Aqsa Mosque is the world's third holiest Islamic site, but Israel controls access to it. Before Ramadan began, Benjamin Netanyahu's government said it would not curtail freedom of worship. And yet, according to Israeli newspaper Haaretz, dozens of restraining orders were issued against Palestinian activists and journalists in recent days. Israeli police were also reportedly ordered to stop young Muslims from entering. It's a situation that Jordan's foreign minister described as designed to push the crisis in Palestine towards, quote, explosion. 